the, uh, another big project that I did through the GVU was the wikis. Um, uh, we learned about wikis soon after Ward Cunningham built it. We were big into small talk, small talk, Ward Cunningham was big into small talk, a programming language that was pretty popular in, uh, in the 80s and early 90s. Um, and we decided to build a wiki in small talk, a particular small talk called Squeak. So we called it the Squeak Wiki or the Swiki. And uh, we started using it in January of 1998. So before Wikipedia, before most of the world had wikis, we had wikis in Georgia Tech classes where students were doing a wide variety of things. And the people here, around here were really innovative in how they used wikis. Uh, Irfan Issa's digital video special effects class would post everything in the Swiki. And the Swiki was the way that each team would coordinate with what each other was doing. And it was how the teaching assistant was able to go through all of the teams simply by walking through the Swiki to see, oh, where are you at right now? Oh, what, are you, what, what, what have you produced so far? I can see all your source code. I can see all of your pictures. This was years before GitHub. This was years before Wikipedia. Um, I think it, the, it, it's pretty obvious what, what that all foreshadowed. Um, we have Wikipedias, we have GitHub, we have these shared open source repositories. Uh, the, the educational ramifications of wikis and the idea of everybody on the web being able to edit and contribute to everything on the web, that was really part of the invention here at Georgia Tech through the GVU. Uh, my group built the software. I mean, I built the first version, uh, and then Jeff Rick, who later became my PhD student, looked at it and said, what is this crud? And completely rewrote it and made it into a wonderful system. At one point, I think we had about a dozen Swiki servers all over campus. But what made Swikis really amazing was the innovation that people across GVU or was able to create with it, that they just did amazing things with wikis. And I, I'm sure that, that the echoes of that are still can be seen in all the wiki work going around today. The graphical history browser runs side by side with Mosaic and builds up a tree structure showing the set of nodes which have been visited from an initial home page. Here, we're browsing through GVU pages and seeing the graphical history develop. Now we're selecting the root node of the graphical history to return to that page and are now returning to the leaf node of the current history and so on and so forth. Let's go off in another direction to the scientific visualization pages. Notice the new node in the graphical history. At the bottom of the graphical history can be seen the title and URL of a selected page. As we continue to visit other pages, notice that the nodes in the history are bitmaps extracted from the upper left corner of the page to which they correspond. The node colors are changing because on this 8-bit deep display, the color map is controlled by the current page. If many pages have the same upper left, then their icons, unfortunately, appear the same. We can also shrink down the overall graph to make it smaller allowing more context to be seen in the history window. Also, by selecting on the arrow tips, we can selectively shrink down parts of the history, again to economize on space and to emphasize especially relevant parts of the tree. The browser can create trees for multiple sites, allowing it to be used in a way similar to bookmarks. The Navigational View Builder allows information designers and sophisticated end users to quickly develop views of information spaces. We'll demonstrate by creating views of the web pages for the GVU Center. The first type of view provided is a customary graph. Because they're often too complex, we've developed several strategies to make them more useful. The first strategy is binding of information attributes to visual attributes. In this example, we're binding shape to author category, square for faculty and staff, circle for students. Color hue to author type, faculty, staff, PhD, student, etc. Color saturation to the date the page was changed, and icon to media type, picture, movie, HTML page. Note that these types of binding are possible only because we've no manually added descriptors to the web pages. This could be done automatically by text analysis systems, but with less than perfect accuracy. The resulting graph, while still complex, is easier to make sense of if one is interested in any of the attributes which have been visually bound. At any time, the user can select a node and see the corresponding web page appear. It's also possible to bind the color and line style of links to various link attributes. 
Binding provides visual structure to the graph but does not reduce its complexity. To do this, related nodes can be clustered together to form abstracted views. Here, we're seeing clustering first of all nodes in the same subdirectory, which reduces the number of nodes and links. Now, clustering is being done based on page subtopics, which include animation, scientific visualization, software visualization, medical informatics, virtual environments, etc. Finally, clustering is done on page topic. For the schema in use, topics are research, biography, and miscellaneous. Now, the abstractions can be viewed in 3D. The most highly abstracted view is shown initially. The user can select a node and explode it to see details, as is being done with the research cluster. Note that abstraction layers are shown on different planes in 3D. Next, the user is exploding a cluster in the virtual environments area to see even more detail. Finally, the user selects the leaf node and sees the corresponding web page. Another way to reduce complexity is by displaying only nodes and links whose attribute values satisfy a query. Here, we're restricting the display to nodes whose topic is research and whose subtopic is user interface. Not only is attribute value querying supported, but graph structure querying as well. Here, we're asking for all HTML files that link to a file of type image and to a file of type movie. Currently, the query topology is input from a file. Ultimately, by example specification could be used. Another type of query shows how a selected node fits into a complex information space by showing its path to landmark nodes. Uh, landmark nodes are determined by a metric that combines topological connectedness with frequency of access. Here we see how Jim Foley's page fits into the overall information space. Because large graphs are difficult to display and understand, we have developed an algorithm to automatically form trees from graphs, starting at an automatically determined root node and using both content and structural analysis of the underlying network. User guidance is optional. Once a tree is created, it can be viewed as a cone tree. In this example, notice how the dark blue color binding helps show that most pages have been authored by PhD students. The tree can also be viewed as a tree map, again notice the dark blue color bindings, or as a scrolling table of contents. NVB is designed to be extensible so that other types of views can be added as well. Also, the perspective wall visualization is supported. In this case, date of last modification has been selected as the attribute on which to partition for building the wall. Now we're seeing operations between three different visualizations of the same underlying information space to demonstrate that selections in one view cause appropriate updates to occur in other views. The perspective wall scrolls and a new item in the tree map is highlighted.